way we rehearsed it, just the way. Thank you, Seamus. So that was one of the banjos that we're going to hear later in the program tonight, uh, one of the banjo styles. And boy, that one gave me a flashback. And I know you're thinking, of course, it's a flashback, Dave, but uh, actually to the days of Lansdale, PA, when they had the Irish festivals out there in the early, uh, this late 70s, early 80s. And you, after the festival was over, the musicians would gather and you'd just come walking down some little hallway somewhere and you'd hear a banjo or a flute or just a couple instruments. So, whew. so yeah, that's, that's the way we're going to intro our first uh, group of performers. Uh, that would be Seth Keibel and Flo Anito. There they are. And you're wondering, how did we pick them to go first? Well, because they're in actual light. And Flo was very worried, must have sent 10 or 20 emails about, oh, I hope I don't jinx it. I hope I don't, like, like I'm worried about the weather, you know, but it's, it's going to be beautiful. I know it's going to be beautiful. And then, like, it just eventually she got the nickname Jinx. Uh, but... Uh, so this is this is very cool. That's that's Seth doing something over there. And the beautiful part of streaming is you can take all these diverse musical elements and essentially put them in the same performance. And that's really that's kind of fun. I mean, what would be the the chances of having an an old time banjo player, an Irish banjo player, Irish musician, and then kind of a jazzy piano and woodwind horn type guy playing together on the same bill. It, it would, but it works beautifully for streaming as you're about to find out. In the sound check, we sound checked the song Stormy Weather, but I, I don't know if Flo's going to do that. I thought she was trying to do the old... It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> well, we're still in the surprise element. Oh, this, is, <laughs> this is so much fun. Notice at the bottom of, of the uh, my talking head here, there's the Seth and Flo, flowanito.com, sethkeibel.com, venmo.com, sethkeibel, or PayPal me, Seth Kibel. This basically means send money to the musicians because these are the gigs. And, and Seth had a great line as we were hurrying up through soundcheck. Uh, Seth, hit him with your next gig, as you told us in soundcheck. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Dave was talking a lot. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Who knew? But he was talking a lot. And I said, you know, could we please hurry this up? Because I have another gig in a month and a half. That's, that's very true. We don't know when this is going to stop. But thanks to you guys coming and playing and IMT, we're going to keep the music as alive as we possibly can. Oh, thank you, Dave. You know? No, it's, it's what we all need to do. I mean, it's Man, all right. So I'm going to turn it, turn the stage, so to speak, over to you. Take it away, Flo and Seth. Oh, thank you, Dave, and thank you everyone for tuning in. And remember, the most important thing you can do right now at this moment in the world is share this stream. Share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies. Share it with your friends' enemies. Share it with your frenemies. Share it with your spiritual advisors. Just go ahead and share it. If you can like and comment, that would be great as well. So look, we were going to surprise everyone by playing this topical song. Somebody spoiled it. Called Stormy Weather. Uh, but Mr. Eisner went to, uh, let the cat out of the bag. But we're going to do it for you anyway. Just can't get my poor heart together. 
always walked in and met if it stays away what I can share will get me Well, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for surprising us all with that. Um, you know, Flo, I, I've been following your music for you know a number of years now. I mean, at least 10 or 12. And I, I'm hearing kind of a little bit of Madeline Peru in that vocal style now. It's getting a kind of little smoky kind of sort of, not raspy at all, but just sort of smoky like a good, good whiskey. Thanks. I love her, actually. Somebody gave me her album when I was in college. Yeah. Yeah. And she gets criticized because people say, oh, she sounds too much like Billie Holiday. Well, I, she can't help it. I mean, it's, it's her vocal, you know? So. Could never be an insult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Seth, it's so good to see you getting a feature as opposed to all the many times that I see you as one of a six or seven piece band member in a swing band that I can't remember the name of the swing band, uh, but it's at Glen Echo because it's always a different band. You know, it's like Seth's band du jour where they've hired you to uh, give them the I'm, clarinets. I'm and musically promiscuous. You are. That's a good way of putting it. It's good. It's hey, great. Quick, way. Before, before Flo introduces this next song, can I, can I have a fanboy minute here? Oh, yeah. So, it's your show. I just want to say, I mean, one of the things I'm very excited about this is this is such an incredible triple bill you've put together. Jake Blount is incredible. Uh, did you hear the whole NPR piece they did on him last week? He had a I did not. He profile on NPR radio. It was fantastic. And then, I got to say, I'm so excited to be on the bill with Seamus because Seamus is actually responsible, uh, and I hope he's listening, for one of those seminal musical moments in my, in my musical development. You know, I was not a musical prodigy. I grew up, I liked music. I was good at it, but I didn't love it. It was just a, a dalliance. Uh, then my sophomore year at college, huh. the summer after my sophomore year, so this would be 1994, I went with a bunch of friends to the Finger Lakes Grassroots Festival. Oh, up in, in Ithaca. In New York. Yeah. And I kind of got separated from the group, and I wandered around, and I wandered into a set from Solos. And this was, like I said, I think it was the summer 94, so it was just after the first album came out. My musical world was very narrow at that point. It yeah. literally blew my mind. I mean, that set, I still remember it vividly, even though it was, you know, what? Well, 1994, that was like five years ago or something. Uh, um, 25, yeah, 26, yeah. That set literally is one of those, like, magical performance experiences that set me on the path to the life of riches I enjoy today. So thanks for that, Seamus. If it hadn't been for that, I might have a real job. You know, I, I think I recall, didn't you say to your dad that, when you grew up, you wanted to be a uh, musician, and your dad said, uh, well, you can't do both. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, that's a great story. That uh, We'll get into that later, but let, let's stay in the guitar and horns part of the show. All right, Flo, take it away. What do we got? All right. This one's an original. <clears throat> um, it's called Man. I wrote it right after Charlottesville, and... Still feels pretty applicable right now, so. <sighs> I think it's the times, the times call for the folk music. All right. Don't 
And every morning When I wake up I brew me some coffee Fill up my cup Turn on the telly Flip to the news A little bit anxious No, it's no use The world's spinning faster out of control Each day spells disaster It's taking a toll Sailors are grasping On tight to the ship We're losing our balance starting to sleep people are people I don't understand this hatred you're harboring it's man against man but man is just One species, one kind Best way to be conquered Is to further divide But instead of uniting Seems like everyone's fighting The child in charge is leading the march His mongering hands To strengthen a base It's feeling misplaced But their anger's displaced The world's spinning faster Each day spells disaster It's taking a toll The sailors are grasping I'm tied to the ship The storm's always brewing I'm starting to sleep Justify the hatred your heart for that different guy. Your God doesn't tell you to hate for creed or for you. That man's just a person, a person like you. Put down your dukes and open your heart. Let's come together. Don't tear us apart. Smile at your neighbors and yeah, lend them a hand. None of us perfect. All of us men, all of us men. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that song is uh, very relevant, very, very relevant. Um, mm. Man. It seemed appropriate that neighbors came by during the I know, that song. we've got like a Hello, small neighbors. audience of some of my neighbors. Hi, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Oof. you so much.
Yeah. There it's, you go. How, how, was that, how, what, what, what was the timeline on that song? When did you write it after the event? Like moments song, later? It basically wrote itself. I yeah. wrote it the night after it happened. I was writing it in the shower without a guitar. And then I got out of the shower, picked up the guitar. I knew exactly what chords to play with it. It was just, yeah. it wrote itself in half an hour and I put it on Facebook half an hour later. May it go viral. May it go viral, you know? Uh, poor choice of words, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. Good point. Good point. I, I'm, I'm afraid that many of my friends are suffering from COVID-15, which is the uh, when you stay home and all you do is cook all day, you don't exercise, you gain 15 pounds. COVID-15. Oof. That would never happen to you, Seth, right? No, no, not at all. Okay, good. This, this is all lungs. Yeah, I got it. And, and, yeah, it helps with your embouchure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, 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 what's next? We got, we got, one, we got one more. One song more. For you. One more. And we're gonna actually bring up a, a special guest for this song, uh, a hostage musician uh, named Will Kybel, uh, and he's gonna play cajon on this. And this is a song that Flo and I actually wrote together. We've been writing a lot of songs together. We put out an EP of our material, which you can find out about in our websites. And, you know, we're both songwriters. And as songwriters, you need to have vivid imaginations and come up with, with stories and people and events that never existed before out of thin air. So this next song is a great example of that. It's, it's a complete work of fiction. Any resemblances to any persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is called Tiny Hands. One, two, three, uh. Tiny hands behind a great big desk. Tiny hands making a piggly mess. Tiny hands can fit his predecessor's shoes. Tiny hands giving our country the blue. Tiny number of tiny minds in a tiny little group of states. Pulled the tiny levers for the big mouth guy. Left us all with one huge colossal mistake. Behind a great big desk, thin skin, immature, and self obsessed. Tiny hands full of fear and ire. Tiny hands might set this world on fire. Put great big little hands on top of a great big book. It's for a meaningful love. While the tiny little crowd just stood around. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> yes, indeed. <clears throat> what that has become a staple in your sets, uh, so to speak. Because that one was written what three years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, three years. Last one. It's great. It's great, folks. Remember to uh, look at the crawler uh, winging its way along down at the bottom, and to send these hardworking musicians uh, some of your hard-earned cash because they need it. And it's the closest we're going to get to legal live music. Uh, nobody gets hurt. And uh, our Cajon player is wearing a mask, which is good. Very important. I, I've been making them do that since long before the pandemic. Right. right. Understandable. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you a little bit later in the show. And we're now going to move over to my good buddy, uh, Jake Blunt. Let's see. Look at that. Look at Rob's work there. Hey, Jake, how's it going? Let's make sure you're on. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yep. almost okay. Sorry, Rob. There you go. Me. Hey. My bad. Uh, I'm learning a new streaming platform right now. Well, we're, we're all learning. It's on the internet where it lives forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's so different. It's not studio and it's not a live show and it's streaming, which is its own world there. Um, how long did you live in Tacoma Park? I lived in Tacoma Park for a year. Okay. Yeah. I lived in DC for a long time, but Tacoma Park was just- Yeah, year. that's right. I, I remember, I think I, I wrangled you into helping out at a folk festival. Yes. One, yeah, that's, yeah. That was sort of like- fun. Let's let's yeah let's get together and see what happens and that, that was great that was a good time uh, and then when I was thrilled when I heard you moved to Tacoma Park and gosh we did a concert where I got to meet your dad and your mom yes um, <laughs> and we I remember I thought it was such a great idea to hold it close to a metro stop and we had about ninety people there and then when I asked for a show of hands of how many people came on the metro three I was. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, but then people say, well, ask how many could walk to the concert. And we got about 30 hands there. So I felt a little bit better. But um, I, I think what I, I guess, gosh, I think I heard you play a couple couple tunes at a Washington Folk Festival a couple years ago. I think you were in the back room of the Spanish ballroom playing, mm -hmm. um, which I think of as the blues room, because they use that on Thursday nights for blues dancing. Um and I thought, holy moly, this is great. And then I remember you were playing, you were playing an old, I don't know, Blind Boy Fuller tune, but you were playing it on the fiddle, or it was, it was like something I'd never heard anybody sort of essentially transpose into that genre. And then you sort of explained to me that this is kind of really what you're interested in doing was researching and pulling up the at the moment, obscure tunes that people really didn't know because they were written by black Americans, some of which didn't even get credit. I know on your new album, Spider Tales, you talk about the Tommy Jarrell tune where Tommy learned it from a woman backstage and never knew her name. And we still yeah. don't really know the name of the, the person. And yet you've dug as deep as you can to uh, create a new awareness and, uh, I think it's just thrilling. And I mean, other people could do this, but they would t probably sound too scholarly. You you got, you know, you got members of the horse flies producing your album. You got, you got, <laughs> you got guts, you got, you know, pizzazz. and it's, uh, it's really, uh, so have I, have I given a sort of quick biography? What, what did I, what am I missing out on? Give me, give me some more detail. I don't know. That that was pretty detailed. Ah, come on. You gotta <laughs> give me something I didn't know. Like your favorite well, I vegetable. I live in Rhode Island now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it hasn't come up. So uh yeah, now I live in Providence. I'm up here. Well, what influenced that move? Uh DC is really expensive. <laughs> yeah, and, you got that uh, right. <laughs> this is a good spot. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of I I just sort of decided I was moving and then thought through potential places and wound up here. Yeah. And it's a good, there's water there. So you, you could put the yacht somewhere. That's good. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, what do you go money yacht? 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you going to start us off with? I'm going to start off with where did you sleep last night from Cutie Lead Better, better known as Lead Belly. <laughs>
right, all right, all right. So who else has ever played that one on fiddle? On my album. <laughs> but I think there's I think there's also Well, that, um, that's unfair. <laughs> some pretty good bluegrass <laughs> versions of that one. I'm I'm not the first person to string bandify that that song. But I like that spring bandify. <laughs> that's good. String bandify. So here's the question. If if I said here's a here's a concert ticket and you can go to any concert, the only thing is the artist has to be alive. You can't pick a who who would you go see if you could go to any concert? Um hmm. I'm gonna say Zealand Ardor. Well, there's one. I tell me about that artist. <laughs> it's this uh, this this Swiss musician named Emmanuel Gagno started this this weird project that's like it's totally up my alley. Where um, he uh, posted on I think it was Reddit, uh, just asking people like I'm going to mash up two completely unrelated genres of music. Give me two genres and I'll make a thing out of it. And someone uh. gave him black metal, and someone else said a bunch of racist stuff so he picked a bunch of like old like black spirituals and chain gang songs wow and then like reworked that sound into a metal <laughs> band and it's just awesome it's like the coolest it's the coolest thing and uh, tell me the name of the artist again zeal and ardor zeal like being enthusiastic so, yes huh okay <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, how did you end up? Where where did you come into contact with uh, Jeff Klaus and Judy Hyman, who are founding members of the Horseflies, which has to be, that band's got to be with Richie Stearns, what, 35 years old? Something like that. I think 79, maybe, is when they got together. Um, and I, I did my yeah. thesis on them. Um, <laughs> which, wait, 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 wait. Explain that one now. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I majored in ethnomusicology. Uh, I went to Hamilton College, which is a small liberal arts college in upstate New York. And pretty much the whole upstate New York old time music scene is in the shadow of like the Ithaca sound, which sure. is epitomized in the horse flies. So I wound up doing my thesis on basically their sound and how it came into existence and also where the musicians that they've influenced since then. So I interviewed Judy for that. Wow. I have not met her before. And yeah. then we spent some more time together at this camp called Falling Waters Music Camp, which happens every winter at La Terrell in Ithaca. And um, I'm seeing that I need to lean in a little bit more. Um, nice cat. <laughs> he uh, visits every now yeah so we wound up spending some time together there and uh when time came i was working on spider tales and i realized i wanted a, a more experienced hand to guide me i i wrote both um jeff and judy and asked if they would produce the album and they said yes so it was wow. a great experience that's a great story um i was at one of the very first gigs when this renegade banjo player in the horseflies played with them and people were very very some were not me <laughs> some were very disappointed because he plugged his banjo in mm. and they said if he wants to plug it in why doesn't he just play an electric guitar and i said basically in a nice way just shut up and listen yeah <laughs> and richie's banjo playing is i mean you can hear when somebody has paid attention to his banjo playing because it's evident in their styles as well. And I, I love Richie and was happy that nobody, nobody won that battle, that Richie just stayed firm. And so yeah. all of them just kind of said, no, we're going to keep doing our thing. I admire yeah. that. I, I have a feeling you would. Yeah. So I, it didn't come as a shock when I saw that spider tales was in fact uh, produced by them. And they even, you'll even let them play on a couple of cuts. Yeah. Is, I was excited yeah. that they agreed yeah. to. That's great. All right, what do you got next? I'm going to play a song called Roustabout. Oh, yeah. From Dink Roberts of Haw River, North Carolina. And this, along with the last one I played, and the next one I'm going to play, uh, 
are all their tunes from my my new album spider tales which came out in late may on free dirt records and service company based in fort totten so local to the dc crowd string instruments in humid summer moment right now turns out uh the weather changes quite rapidly when you have a tropical storm come through <laughs> the age of that banjo sorry how old is that banjo um a year oh darn <laughs> <laughs> it looks all my instruments are pretty young but huh I, I was noticing the neck with the you know with the scooped out frets and the uh yes. it looked like one of those old necks that uh i'm blanking out on the buckby it looked like a buckby neck yeah. Well, I mean, you know, banjo builders today definitely take a lot of inspiration from those old yeah. instruments, especially this was built by uh, Cedars Instruments, which my friend Will uh, is the, the banjo maker there uh, in Dorset, or Vermont. And he definitely takes a lot of inspiration from from older models. Uh, and we we did a lot of investigating of different historical antecedents. Um, it was partially modeled after this one owned by a guy named Lou Snowden, who was the banjoist in this band called the Snowden Family Band. That was a band of free black folks living in Ohio back before emancipation actually happened and are purportedly maybe the original authors of the song Dixie and wrote it as a joke. Uh, uh -huh. And then their neighbor, Daniel Decatur Emmett, took it to the world and everyone forgot it was a joke. <laughs> Yep. So it's, it's quite a fascinating family story. There's a great book about it called Way Up North in Dixie. Um, but yeah, I saw him with the, this photo of him and his brother, uh, Ben, playing in the open gable of their house, where they apparently used to play and have people dance in the yard. And he was playing a six-string banjo like this, where it had the extra um, oh, yeah. peg right in the middle of the headstock. And when will agreed to make me a banjo i was like i kind of want it to be like this and he was like yes i think we should copy that head design and blah 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 and then you know i added on the over the top brass plating as you do but <laughs> that explains why um why in the in your album spider tales 
you've put the tunings uh, that you're using. And there's, I noticed that there was a couple extra. It's like, wait a minute, that fiddle must be a five string. Yep. But that the banjo, I, I didn't notice that it was a six string. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Just extra low end on everything. I've been playing with, with duo situations long enough that being able to make a fuller sound with few instruments is something that's important to me. It works. Less yeah. to carry to the gig too. Yeah. So Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I noticed at first when I saw like a G and then another G, I thought, oh, maybe he's tuning it an octave, you know, letting me know that the G is actually an octave up. But yeah. the fact that it was just another string. <laughs> Uh, and that's an important, that's part of the learning process, which which basically in a lot of ways separates old time music from bluegrass. Old time is, is much more cooperative in a sense, not well, deliberately, it just kind of works that way. I'm not sure that I totally agree with that characterization. Um, okay. I think that well played bluegrass is equally as cooperative. Um, but I think that in the ranks of hobbyists it's a lot easier to find bluegrass musicians who want to show off than old time musicians yeah um, but i think once you get to the good music music is only good if you're all listening to each other and reacting to one another and I yeah think bluegrass is no exception to that yeah i meant as it seems like there are more people sitting around at a festival playing at an old time music festival playing after hours than at a bluegrass festival i mean both have sufficient numbers but i think old time it just seems i don't know seems a little bit more um uh, not really knocking bluegrass at all but it, it, bluegrass might be a little more expensive maybe it would be another way of thinking <laughs> of it yeah <laughs> the price of the festivals um tell me about uh black cliff top oh yeah so that was just uh a thing that my friend Jillian McCommons actually had the idea to do. Um, for those who aren't familiar, Clifftop is sort of the biggest old time music festival around. Um, and everybody uh, gathers together. There are contests, there are one or two different sets, but for the most part, people just go to jam with one another. And uh, Jillian had the great idea that because there are only ever like nine black people who go because it's old time music, um, we should create a space where we could all like go be together um, because sometimes it just gets exhausting. Very little oh, intentional hostility, just a lot of like comments that are not tasteful sometimes. Um, or like all of the black women getting called each other's names the whole time. <laughs> um, hmm. And it's, uh, yeah, Jillian had a great idea, and I was the one with the campsite set up already. Um, so I brought my, um, my pop-up and my little black girl banjo magic pennant that I got at an Our, Our Native Daughters show at the Smithsonian and set up, and it was great. We all hung out. We were camped next to my friend Ian's campsite, which was called the Nest of Strident Feminism. Uh, so that that made a big deal. It made a, a big impact, I think. We're planning to do it again. Uh, call our little pod the intersection, which is a fun Smart. activist pun for us. <laughs> yeah, making making the world better one song at a time. There you go. <laughs> All right, give us give us your last one for now. I will. This is called Brown Skin Baby. And it comes from a Mississippi fiddler named Jade Dillon, who learned it from a black Mississippi fiddler named Old Dennis. Who knows which Old Dennis? Uh, for those who are not familiar with old time music, I'm having to retune between songs because they're in different keys. It's a pretty standard practice, but it does take a little bit of time. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That ends on a on a woohoo. That was good. Good good Thank woohoo's. So we're gonna come back to you later. Stick around. Don't it's true. I'd say don't go home, but you are home. <laughs> so, um, well, thank you again. And folks, note at the bottom, uh, you can donate to Jake directly. Please do that. It's really easy. There's the Venmo and there's the PayPal. And, um, you know, it would be, uh, it would be wonderful. So, okay, onward. We're going to explore the world of banjo even more now with, uh, Seamus Egan. Hello. Yes. All right. Seamus, I want to thank you for coming on and doing Thanks this. Me. And I, I think that your music, as you know, I'm gosh, I think, I think I've been sort of a fan of yours and producing you in concert and, I think in the days when Mick Maloney would bring you down from Philadelphia, I think. <laughs> That's going back a ways, isn't it? Yeah, and sort of watched all the progressions. And part of the reason I'm really glad you did this is I'm hoping that people that came to hear you heard Jake, because I think that that's a world that most people don't know about. And part of the tradition of music is experiencing more of it. I, I like the fact that he he's choosing the term intersection. Mm. And you certainly understand from the projects that you've done over the years, uh, where you're, you know, you're not to be confused with 
the guy that you hire for St. Patrick's Day to play Danny Boy and Irish eyes are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the whole idea of trad music, you know, was a relatively new concept in America, I think, uh, becoming popular really probably maybe the mid 70s is where, you know, what you guys did and, and the Philadelphia scene and Celtic Thunder and, you know, and, you know, and then then obviously you've you've influenced a a, a Reed and Horn player Seth Kybel who knew you know that was a, that, that was a that was a, a, a lovely story and and I, that was an amazing festival I, I do remember I think that was our that would have been like the first time that Solace was was there yeah. at that festival um, and uh, yeah that was a it's just a magic place and uh, I do I remember I remember it was pretty wild and and of course people will will say, oh, oh, they've broken up. Oh, I'm so sad. No, they went on to do their own projects. It was time, because, it was time yeah. for a break. Um, right. You know, 20 years, or 20, it was 21 years. Really. Yeah. So we finished, um, you know, we made the, the 20th anniversary album. And then, sure. um, but we had been, we'd been talking about, um, you know, for the couple of years before that, uh, we actually didn't realize it was coming up on 20 years. And which is a good thing we, we probably would have we probably would have taken the break sooner but then we're like well we're so close to 20 so we'll, yeah. we'll make it to 20 and then we toured you know toured that album so it was really more like 21 years before um you know yeah. before hitting hitting pause um so it's um yeah it, it's uh you know it's 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 kind of hard to believe that was like what three years ago yeah. um so an awful lot has an awful lot has happened do you do you think of yourself as a session musician, meaning recording sessions more than live stuff these days, or is it? A, a, I mean, not these days, but yeah. prior to prior to COVID. Prior to, yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, talk after the band, you know, went on hiatus. You know, I sort of, you know, I moved from Philadelphia, um, and so there was, you know, sort of there was a bit of a transitional sort of moment there and um you know sort of started to get back into some of the music that i'd been you know writing over the years and some of it ended up on you know in the in the solace world and some just sort of ended up in a drawer um and so once i got settled up here in vermont i started to you know kind of think about you know some of that stuff and um and that you know I was writing some of that older stuff and combined with some new stuff that I was writing started to take shape. And, you know, and so in terms of being a session musician, I became my own session musician, yeah. you know, and uh, started to, you know, put the head down and, and, and you know, get to work. Uh, um, I'm, I'm great at starting things, but not so great at finishing things. So I was, you know, I've sort of uh, made myself finish a few things. And um, I think when, yeah, when we first talked about doing this, I think you said, yeah, I, I read a lot of those emails. I don't necessarily answer them, but I read them. <laughs> I am getting, I am getting better. You know, but I, I, have I no think excuses. that's a... I have no excuses anymore. <laughs> I mean, I was, I can't say but I'm it's, not at home. It's yeah. really, uh, I think that's a very true comment for a lot of us. <laughs> so it's like we absorb the information and it's like, oh, wait a minute, I've got to do something with it. So what are you going to, what are you going to start us off with? Well, um, I'm going to play a tune that I wrote a, a while ago, and it's sort of dedicated, I suppose, in some ways to the banjo. Um, and um, the, I just noticed a, a comment flashed up there if you would tell us something about the banjo. This banjo, this tenor banjo, um, a four string banjo. Um, so uh, this one in particular, uh, it's from the 1920s, I believe. Uh, it's an old Bacon and Day symphony. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, the tenor banjo has been in, I guess, came to Ireland, I heard in about the 1840s or so, um, came over <clears> as a five string instrument, um, from what I understand. And, uh, and then it was, um, you know, uh, sort of evolved into a, into a melody instrument, uh, playing the fiddle tunes and tuned it like, uh, tuned it like a fiddle. Um, and so that's how we sort of have this this style of banjo and you know thinking about you know Irish music in the banjo um, you know it's not obviously native to the the culture of Ireland and the, the tradition 
Um, so, you know, there's a bit of a, there's been, it's better now, but there was a little bit of resentment to the, <laughs> that wasn't welcome, open armed welcome. So, um, so I was thinking about that and there was, I had been reading a book called The Endurance, which was the story of, uh, the story of Ernest Shackleton. And this is going to sound like, how in the world is this going to connect to the banjo? But wait, it does. We're yeah, hanging in. We're yeah, with yeah, you, <laughs> stay with me on this one. But um, so everyone knows the story of Shackleton. That thing did not did not go particularly well. That uh, that voyage. Um, so uh, so I'm not giving anything away when I say you know it, it didn't go well. But so they had to abandon the ship at some point. Um, you know, and you know they were sort of a, uh, Shackleton gave the order uh, to, you know to save their lives. They had to leave the ship. And they could only bring the crew could only bring two two pounds worth of sort of personal belongings, um, and um, so it was very pared down. It was just what they might need to survive. Except there was one person in the crew who had a banjo on board, and Shackleton made an exception, and he insisted that the banjo come with them, in spite of the sort of you know, eminent danger they all faced because wow. uh, he considered it to be vital mental medicine. So I thought, you know, that certainly deserves a banjo tune. So, cool. <laughs> so there we are. So this is a, a version of that tune that we solace recorded actually with the, with the ducks, the great band uh, years ago.
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's quite the tune. Um, that's a fine, a fine bacon and day you've got there too. That's uh, uh, it. Uh, it does the it does the trick. I'm, I'm probably concealing. This came with it. This wasn't mine, but this was stuck to it, and I don't know how long it's been there. Uh, and I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's an American yeah. eagle. And so. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, well, what I like about the combination of that banjo and your playing is the the lower notes aren't muddy. There's a crispness and an attack to it without the high notes being sharp or brittle. It's, you know, it's, it's the right balance. Everything is. It's a, it's a, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a lovely banjo. I mean, I think partly, I mean, one of the things that like when I was learning, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, my, I was drawn to the banjo, you know, listening to, you know, when we lived in Ireland, uh, listening to, you know, Mick Maloney on the radio and on, yeah. and on albums. And, you know, an Irish tenor banjo has a very distinct sound to it. Yeah, a cadence um, almost. Yeah, yeah. And, but I also had been listening to, uh, which at the time, my sort of seven and eight year old brain uh, didn't realize that there was, you know, not all banjos were the same. And I remember right. listening to what would turn out to be five string and bluegrass uh, banjo and going, well, I really liked the sound of that, but not really understanding that they were playing it. Like it was this very different instrument yeah. playing in a very different way. But that sound was something that, that was something that really caught my ear. And that sort of, sort of um, that style of, of, Picking, I guess, but you know, so I, that was always in my, in my, in my sort of brain as far as like the sound of the banjo that I kind of wanted to at some point get to. I wish I had known, or someone had told me that they were playing with you know fingers instead of one. Finger, right. You know, and that the first string and the fifth string were in fact the same. Like, yeah. I could have made my life a whole lot simpler. But you might not have developed. Uh, you might not have developed that sound today. Who knows? Who knows? I I ignorance is bliss. <laughs> You know, you, you might be somewhere playing Rocky Top, you know, or whatever. You know, I, yeah. I, I'd be all right. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so let me ask you the same question I asked Jake. If, if you had a concert ticket to put you in the front row in a time when we can go see concerts, who would you go hear? Oh, um, you know, I don't know. It can, be, it can be someone you've heard already. I was thinking about, I mean... I think maybe it's uh, sort of the the circumstance that we're in at the minute. You know, I'm just yeah. anything. You know, it's it's up, but it's almost something like I, I want to see something that I've never seen before. And I don't know if this qualifies yeah. as uh, it, it. I guess it's a concert. There is music. Um, I don't necessarily know it's live music, but it's just sort of. A, I, I, and I don't even know how to describe it. The person's name is, um, I think it's Johan Bourgeois. And it's huh. like this modern dance uh, uh, experience. I don't know how else you would call it, but what's amazing about it, it's like it, it occurs, he, he uses a trampoline. Um, wait, wait, wait. he a uses a trampoline. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's really absolutely spellbinding. And I mean, among other things, platforms and yeah. it's really, really difficult to explain what happens. And I certainly don't have the the sort of dance or movement vocabulary to, to try and explain it. Um, but it's absolutely mesmerizing. And I would, it's been on my uh, sort of uh, list to, to, to see. So if you could get me a ticket to that, that would be just okay. <laughs> and maybe I probably need a plane ticket to, uh, yeah. uh, to Europe. So yeah, it sounds European. If, if, you could yeah. throw, if you could throw that in as well, um, I'll head over. <laughs> well, that's, that's an amazing answer. <laughs> so, it would have. How do you think your music would be? I mean, what banjo, banjo on a trampoline? I mean, yeah. there, there are too many jokes about like that. Like, you know, a lot of people would like to. You know, I'm not even going to say it. That's no, I don't start. Doesn't no, deserve no. to be repeated. But I know the ba trampoline banjo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I didn't actually realize that at the time. But all right. All right, what's what's next in the hit parade? Ah, uh, I'll play uh, I'll play a tune that's one of my favorite of all time. It's an uh, it's an old jig called um, "Lark in the Morning." It's an old piping tune. Um, so.
All right. That's right, Lark, in the morning. I, I think there's a shop, mm. used to be, shop in California, Mickey Zeekly, yeah. right? Yeah, I think it is still there. Although I yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't quite figure it out. It's like some people tell me it's part of a, a lot of the inventory is hanging in a restaurant, oh. and they just take it down from the restaurant. That was many years ago, which is a great idea. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, can you move over while I uh, take that uh, octave mandolin off the wall? Sold. <laughs> so, well, however, whatever the state of the store, the tune is still still there, and it's still, it's, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a good tune. Yeah, it's a great, uh, huh. I want to tell a funny story. Um, I think that the fir first or second time you played for IMT, um, you were, I, I think, still in high school. Is that, I, I'm pretty sure that's right. And I think you came, I, I feel like Mick, Mick Maloney had something to do with it. You came down. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean most of my early traveling um, with, it was, you know, was with, was with Mick. Right. For sure. And, and you had won some All-Ireland stuff, the All-Ireland Junior stuff as well, right? It wasn't one of them dancing? Oh, <laughs> where did you hear about this? Well, that's, um, I, I, need to, I need to, you know, find out if there's any truth to that. Well, I, I, um, I, I, yeah, I did when I was younger, way younger. I, I, I said Junior, I, I said Junior. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, what's yeah. below a junior? Uh, if, we, if we could, I don't know. Whatever, whatever yeah. young is that? That, that yeah. that's young. Yeah. So um, I did. Yeah, uh, the under 11s. Uh, I, yeah. I. I, I <laughs> hey, where did you get this information? Well, you know, I've been doing this a check, while. I gotta check my Wikipedia. Someone's yeah. in there like messing uh, with my Wikipedia. All right. <laughs> Well, I remember that one of the time, and then you went to school in the Boston area, as I recall. I, for I went for I think half a semester, if even that, uh, to Boston College. Right, because yeah. you came down to a show at IMT, and you took the train, mm. and you were traveling just with one or two instruments and a kind of a small duffel bag, and we zoomed. the The train was running late, and we zoomed into the room for the sound check. And you zipped open the duffel bag to get whatever. Sounds, sounds about right. And a, 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 a bottle of single malt fell out. <laughs> oh. And I remember thinking, wait a minute, how can this be? <laughs> and then I realized you were in college. It was perfectly legal. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I was... Well, no, that you, we were. Yeah, we were, no, because we totally in my brain, I had you as, you know, a 15 or 16 year old or whatever. Strangely, <laughs> I'm still 15 or 16 in my own brain right now. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this was the way back machine that I really, uh, I, I, I just, I love that moment that it was just you and I shared that moment until now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. But, but uh, well, I spent that was a great, you know, what, that sort of experience in Boston. I was most weekends I was on a train. Yeah, I would, I would you know, go someplace on Friday after class and sure, and then come back Sunday night, Monday morning. Yeah, most playing times, music, get off back bay uh, and go right to class. So uh, and I, I think yeah. I think Eugene O'Donnell was a big influence. Eugene was. Um, yeah, I mean, Eugene is. Uh, you know, he was uh, sort of loomed quite large in my life. I mean, in fact, yeah. he, he introduced my parents to one another. <laughs> well, yes. Idea. So <laughs> I, I, I owe my entire existence to, to Eugene O'Donnell. So. All right. So are we on to number three? I've lost track. Um, we, we, we could be. We could be on two. We could skip over three, go right to four. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, let's, a good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure gonna, about three. All right, let's do three. All right, we'll do three. All right. Um, okay, uh, so, uh, start with a tune written by a uh, great, uh, great friend of mine, a great accordion player, Jimmy Keane from Chicago.
Well, okay. Yes, indeed. That is that is a tune. That is a <laughs> tune. It is rocking away. Okay, um, we're going to go right into the fourth tune. But first, I want to just, there are people commenting that behind me, you can see that the toilet seat is ah. up. I am in my man cave, okay? I'm in the man cave. I clean it all the time. And Charlie Parker, my cat, occasionally can drink out of it. It's that clean. Wow. So, so the toilet seat is up because I'm in the man cave. No. But now, on to the encore. Now I'm nervous about what was behind me the whole time. No, you, you've been good. Dog. You've been good. <laughs> okay. So we're on. I, I'll switch it up just a little bit. All right. Um, and do something on the on the low whistle. Okay. Um, so yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on this. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was great to to hear everyone. Reconnect. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been great. And uh, everyone out there, look after yourselves. Be kind. Notice the PayPal stuff for IMT. Notice it for Seamus. This is where you can spend your stimulus check, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, really this was wonderful to reconnect. And someday when we can all gather hundreds in the same room, we'll do it again. Soon. I hope all right. Soon, very soon. Thank you, Seamus. All right. All right. We're going we're gonna to move right over. We're going to let the, the worlds collide even more. We're going to bring Jake back on. And <laughs> All right, Jake, take us out with something. Yeah. Jake, I need you to unmute on your end, please. That was the voice of Thanks, Rob. Rob. The voice of God. <laughs> this is Old Timey Gray Eagle from a Cherokee fiddler named Manco Sneed. <laughs> Thank you. 
You tore through that one. <laughs> We're, I think Jake and Seamus are wondering if uh, Seth and, and Flo are going to have enough light if we could see them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's it's very nightclubish looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, Jake, thank you for doing this. And uh, Rhode Island's lucky to have you. I'm going to see if my buddy Elliot Krieger is anywhere near where you are because he's a... He's a good author. You'd probably like him. Thank and thanks for doing that. Thanks for uh, having me. This is wonderful. The worlds of the banjo collide, and what better way to take it home than to uh, have Flo and Seth. What do you got, guys? All right. Thank you. Big round of applause once again for Jake Blount and Seamus Egan and for Dave Eisner's Man Cave. So we're going to do another original song to end. We're going to have Will join us on piano. This is a song I wrote a few years ago about a very important word. It's a sing-along. You can all join in at home. And it's one word, and it's the most important word for everyone's emotional and mental stability during these trying times. Say it with me now. Unfriend. There's no rest for the stupid We all know that trolls don't sleep They've got means to remember And innuendos to retweet So what's a good flow to do when their echo chambers are on the fritz? exist when the matrix starts to gleam. Friend, your next door neighbor, unfriend, your college roommate, unfriend, your second cousin once removed, unfriend, guy in IT, unfriend, your great aunt Lizzie, unfriend, your bunkmate from Camp Summer 92. What happened to all the silly pictures? What happened to the mindless chit chat? I never thought the day would come when I dearly miss that grumpy cat. You can try to reason or sway to bring them to your point of view. If only make yourself angry till there's only one thing left to do. Unfriend, your next door neighbor, unfriend, your fraternity brother, unfriend, that girl in HR who caught your eye, unfriend. Uncle Spencer on friends, your guidance counselor on friends, the entire state of Florida. Woman you once shared an office with way back in 2002. Never seen this bad, she crazy. When all she posted, yes, all she posted was pictures, it was pictures of a fool. On friend, on friend, on friend. On friend, on friend. New boyfriend, unfriend, his heavy metal band, unfriend, the 
entire state of Florida. Oh, <laughs> it's the change you've been needing, unfriend. Time for some house cleaning, unfriend. With a streamlined friend list, you're living life. Unfriend. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> this is, you know, this is like like being in the early 60s where you wander around the Greenwich Village and you poke your head in one place and there's Celtic music and another place there's folk music, another place there's jazz. It's This is uh, kind of a neat little recreation. It's our own little street. Jake, I love that term, the intersection. I think that's a great, great term. Seamus, I'm sorry if I hit you with all those stories I've been holding back for years, <laughs> but it's, it's all in good fun. <laughs> uh, I think the dancing one is going to maybe leave it. Yeah. yeah, that was hidden well. Hidden. Yeah, for a long time, you know? Was, yeah, I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> it wasn't even me. Oh, man, this was great, guys. Thanks for doing this. And, and we, we held out enough light for we can see uh, Flo and Seth and sun back there and the, the who is that masked man yeah there it is yeah all right well thank you everybody this was great uh luckily we ran over but the bartender didn't kick us out early and the wait staff uh, wasn't making noise putting the glasses on the table and the chairs and you know so uh we did well in it but there's rob rob where's is the restroom you know where the restroom is dave yeah it's directly behind me so okay thank you <laughs> Be sure and leave the seat up when you're done, okay? <laughs> you, you do use the seat up, right? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that a big deal, you know? My wife hasn't been down in here in this room in months. Anyway, uh, Rob, can you come on the screen for a minute? And Because really, this was a, a wonderful job you did. Rob, where are you? There I'm pressing you. all these buttons, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, it, if it looked seamless... And wonderful to everybody out there. It's because all of us spend time, and Rob is sort of a steering the ship, kind of to uh, make it make it sound and look as good as we can in these weird new adventures. Tonight was streams. tonight was a force of chaos, man. I don't know. <laughs> it was great. It was great. all right. Let's let's tell them about um, the next show. The next show is. What? Uh, <laughs> Yep, nice. There it is. Look at that. You can't possibly have Tom Prasada Rao and Rob Gutenberg and Greg, Greg Klima all on one bill. That's nuts. It is. It is. But, you know, sometimes I don't tell each guy who we're going to have. And then after they've agreed, then I tell them, you know, so that's how we got it going. So, they said know. it couldn't be done. Yeah, I, I couldn't find any two string banjo players. There's some guy in Thailand, but he wasn't available. So. I had to go with sax and keys, you know, but uh, that's that's what happens. Uh, August eighteenth, it's going to be a killer show. Is that the right date on that? I really hope so. Okay, I'll be there. All right, everybody, thank you. It, uh, who knows what night it is? It's Tuesday night. It, it feels like date night number one or date night number two. All Not in the man cave, it don't. In the man cave, no. Just Ladies me. and gentlemen, thank you so much for being part of it. Institute of Musical Traditions evening with us. We do this every what? First and Every third weeks, Tuesday, uh, I think it's a good plan. Um, yeah. If you if you got something a little low, left over after donating to all the artists, and I'll throw that in the comments one last time before we say good night. Sure. Um, please, if you got something left over for imtfolk.org, we're entirely supported by your donations. Um, but you know, the artists need it a little bit more than we do. So whatever you can do is yeah. much welcome. If you're given one time, give it to the artists. 
Yeah. And uh, okay. again, thank you so very, very much for tuning in. I think it's been a great night. Good night, Yay. everyone. Good night, Give them everybody. your hands. Give them the hands. Yay. Yes. Yay. Reach on in there. Yeah. Grab that audience. Thank Good night, you, everyone. Folks. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Take care.